AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Arti Bagu. Arti is a machine learning engineer working for Snorkel AI. Arti, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So, Arti, let's start with yourself. Can you give us a brief background of your journey in tech from where you got started? What got you initially interested and some of the roles you've held along the way, taking us up to where you are today at Snorkel? Sure, happy to. I'm originally from India. I was born and raised there. was very not into tech as much growing up, so I wanted to be a doctor. So I was very into medicine, almost went to med school. And then came to the U.S. at NYU for my undergrad to do computer science. I was just interested in trying it out. And then I started working in a lab that did machine learning for healthcare. And just seeing that and the applications of machine learning and how we're able to predict diseases and and the impact it can have on healthcare. So that really is what got me interested in tech (laughs) after starting like a computer science undergrad undergrad degree. And since then, I've continued to work in machine learning, and it's been really exciting. Throughout my undergrad, I mostly continued to do research. So I worked in a lab uh, that did machine learning for healthcare, also did research internships, like I contributed to an open source machine learning system, was very set on getting a PhD at some point. It's not something I wanted to do, wasn't sure, and came to Stanford for my master's instead, to figure it out even further, continue working in AI. So came to Stanford for my master's, also in computer science. And then After I got to Stanford, I've mostly just been working with Andrew Ring, started working in his lab at Stanford, also doing machine learning for healthcare. This time, medical imaging previously was clinical medicine, was head TA for the deep learning class, which is one of the largest deep learning classes at Stanford for a number of quarters. So I managed that. I worked at a startup that did machine learning for defect detection manufacturing. So sort of moved from a more research role to a more engineering applied machine learning role. And then after that, before I joined Snorkel, I was working at AI Fund, which is a $175 million fund. It was uh, backed by Sequoia, Greylocks, and top VCs. And the goal was to start companies from scratch internally within the fund. Uh, So we would start a company, hire CEOs to run it. So even when I was doing more applied machine learning, I got more interested in machine learning and product management for machine learning. And uh, which is why I was really excited to work at AI Fund and grateful for Andrew to give me the opportunity. But what we did was essentially I did everything from what does this product look like? Or initially it was a machine learning training program. So what does the program look like? What does the curriculum look like? Marketing for it, go to market. What does the financial roadmap look like? And then also worked for an AI ethical company which was more of a product role. So I really got to have a very undefined role (laughs) while I was working at AI Fund, uh, helping start these companies with some excellent mentors. And then towards the end at AI Fund, the fund strategy shifted to being more of an external VC. So I was also doing just like venture capital and and being an associate investing in machine learning companies at that point and learning more about how do you evaluate a machine learning company. So yeah, before I joined Snorkel, got to see, started off in machine learning research, went to engineering, got interested in product, had this very vague role, but very, a great learning experience, which was machine learning product, uh, also VC. And then currently now I'm, I'm at Snorkel AI, which is this early stage startup, also started out of Stanford. Um, happy to chat more about that, but currently I am a machine learning engineer there. Thank you so much for the overview. I really appreciate you talking us through your journey and quite impressive how much you've been able to accomplish in, in what is a, a relatively short space of time and getting to work with the great Andrew Ang. So you, you mentioned there currently at Snorkel. So if you could give us the high level overview, who are Snorkel AI as a business? What are you guys trying to do? What problems are you tackling in this space? And then, and then give us some insight into what it's like to be part of the AI. Definitely. So Snorkel, I'll focus more first on the problem that we're solving. We don't need to convince listeners of this podcast that AI and machine learning can have a huge impact in a lot of verticals and a lot of use cases and really can unlock a lot of value. But currently, deployment of AI in enterprises is blocked not by machine learning models, which have come really far, and there's been a lot of great advances there, or by infrastructure like storage and compute and things like that, but it's really blocked by training data. And for a lot of companies, just even to start working with machine learning, it's like, first, where do you get the data from? And then once you have the data, how do you get it labeled? So this training data bottleneck is really the key bottleneck to unlock AI value in enterprises. And that's what we focus on. 
So currently the way AI deployment or training is done is you collect a lot of data and then people go through and manually label each data point as one of the classes that they're interested in, which is really time consuming, really expensive. And for a lot of enterprises, they might also have security or privacy concerns, and like a lot of federal customers we work with or healthcare. So you can't even send it to crowdsourcing. And so you have to rely on internal subject matter experts, which again is super time consuming. And for months, you can't even get started on using machine learning because you're blocked on training. So this is a key problem that Snorkel tries to solve. And so Snorkel started as a research project at Stanford about five years ago. And so we have a lot of Stanford PhDs and professors at, at Snorkel. And this was a key problem that they were trying to solve, which is how do we get around training data bottleneck? And it started as instead of labeling each data point one at a time, why don't we write functions to label a large amount of data all at once? So to give you an example, instead of labeling each email as ham or spam, uh, which is spam or not spam, you can say if send money is in the email, label it as spam, which is a very simple function, but that would label maybe hundreds or thousands of data points all at once, instead of you going through and labeling each data point one at a time. And you might write many of these functions. This can be either labels people have or a model that is a function, anything that can be a function applied to your data. And then Snorkel, the research project was, how do we combine these various functions into one label for training data point? So we'll resolve conflicts for you. We'll figure out which function is better, even without ground truth, and, and get you to a training data set much, much faster. When you hear about it, it's like, that, that seems to be just like a better way to do it for most applications. Like, why don't people just do this? And, and having joined Snorkel since as well, I'm like, weak supervision and and so that's what it's called if you want to look it up and programmatic labeling which is ai beyond hand labeling is just a fundamentally better way to iterate for certain applications using snorkel so this training data bottleneck is what the snorkel open source project and the research project was geared up to solve and now snorkel flow is our commercial offer which is not just focused on data labeling, but it's an end-to-end -end machine learning platform, which you can you know, generate this training data set using what I just mentioned, which is programmatic labeling. We also, you can also just train a model on Snorkel Flow using just like clicking buttons and training models really the easy part of machine learning these days. And then we provide very targeted error analysis tools so you can identify how you can improve your training data as well as models. AI deployment goes from previously it is, you just gather a large amount of training data and then you spend a lot of time iterating on the model. With Snorkel Flow, you can label a bit of your data, train a model, and then very quickly using Snorkel Flow identify where should I be iterating on more, both in terms of the data and the model. So it, it is a much more intelligent way to iterate, much more faster way to iterate. And it's also shown to be a more empirically better way. So we we work with many different verticals. We work with two of the top three US banks. We work with insurance companies. We work with a lot of federal customers on a large variety of tasks from like document classification, named entity recognition, even some conversational use cases to get to a faster AI development and deployment application much faster than you would with a traditional data labeling approach. That's a lot. Excellent job. Great summary. And clearly the results for Snorkel are there. I would encourage people to go check out the website. And it's a testament to say that the majority of the Fortune 500 are aware of you guys and many of them using you. So the biggest names in tech have been drawn into what Snorkel are doing or are implementing. And that really speaks to the level of specialization. Want to focus now on your role, your team, and what the typical day-to-day -day is, if there is such a thing. Can you give us some insight into typical projects, the life cycle, and some of the interest and challenges? Challenges that you're, you're facing. So we're still very early in our journey at Snorkel and uh, not every day looks the same, but I can give a high level bucketing of what the role involves. So my role specifically, I'm on the machine learning engineering team here at Snorkel. And what my role involves is I primarily work with a lot of our customers to enable them to use Snorkel Flow in a better way. So Snorkel Flow, we're an end-to-end -end platform. We're not a services company, but because weak supervision and programmatic labeling is such a different way to iterate on machine learning applications, we often have to support our customers, at least to enable them to use Snorkel Flow platform in a better way. So a lot of it is traditional machine learning, which also looks slightly different at Snorkel because not a lot of it is on training the model, but working on creating a training label data set. But it's working with customers to enable them to use Snorkel. And then we're still very actively building back our building our platform. So a lot of it is more product management or thinking around that, which is now that we've learned these things from these customers, how do we build it back into the platform such that we can enable other customers of a similar use case? So let's say we worked with the top three US banks. What are their applications? How does that look like? And how does that look similar to other applications other banks might have? And how can we enable that faster? What are some features that we need to build in? So there's a bit of product management there. And then there's also software engineering, which is in any machine learning engineering role, which is actually building back these features or making the platform more extensible. 
and people choose you know how they want to spend their time in each of these three buckets but because we're still a very small team there's so much to be done <laughs> that you really can focus on the type of use cases you care about most the the skills that you want to build on and even go beyond your team to learn from let's say the go-to-market team or the sales team so that's been quite exciting and then me personally i'm more interested in product management just in general so i i take uh, a lot of roles there where i try to figure out what are the key user problems in our platform broadcasting that over the engineering team like not just focusing on specific use cases but uh, just overall platform improvement and prioritizing but yeah mainly machine learning engineering uh, product management software engineering and some of the things i've done have also been some more frontier use cases let's say text-based or classification is something that we feel very comfortable with but let's say for a new data type or a new use case we might have to do more machine learning research type roles where we have now a dedicated research team but initially for quick prototyping it was also reading more state-of-the-art research papers thinking about how we can build it back in into our platform so I really love that I can go from reading a research paper, presenting that one day to then thinking about like product management and talking to our sales team another day. So just a wide variety of experiences here. Yeah, I want to get your take on that because it's something we, we talk about a lot here on this podcast is how people transition from academia to industry or just pure research projects to industry. And, and obviously within industry, there's deliverables. You've got to create something. You've got to build something. Can you give us some insight into what your journey has been like? Because I know a lot of the work you did was on the research side and then you made that transition via the, the AIVC company. So now that you're in the pure startup, but still uh, able to dip your toes in some research projects, what have you found? What has been most most notable in the differences in the approach? Sure. Yeah. So initially when I was working in research, I feel like uh, a lot of the projects were very like, here's the data set, try to figure out models that work. And this has been very useful to progress machine learning over the years, just because we didn't even have models that worked really well for a lot of use cases and modalities. So starting 2012, when like deep learning took off, the focus on modeling really has paid off where we now have excellent machine learning models that work, especially in a lot of NLP and image based use cases that now people can just use. So more traditionally and even carried on is you start with a data set and you assume that's fixed in, in academia. And then you iterate on the models and try to figure out what is like, how do I model this? Or what are some modeling approaches I can use? Or what is assume that the data is stationary, I guess is the biggest thing. Whereas my first machine learning engineering role at landing, you could just, it's rarely developing models from scratch. You might use like somebody else's models from a GitHub repo or implement something that a paper has, but your focus is not state-of-the-art machine learning models. It's more like, how do I make this model work for my specific data set? And so the challenges are very much, as I mentioned, where do I get my training data from? Okay, and how do I get this labeled? Do I have enough samples for each of the classes that I care about? How is my model going to generalize? Are conditions going to change for this model? So it's a lot more around collecting the training data and, and that is also getting it labeled. Then the model training and deployment is really the easy part and then it's more like monitoring which is, is how's the model performing over time is there more data i want to collect so it's very data centric and this is a word that's been used a lot now which is data centric machine learning because we've gone past the point where we're focusing more on models and and for especially machine learning engineering in startups it's more where do you get the data from and then making sure your models are behaving reliably and so that's the focus there so there's a lot that I just didn't know getting into my first machine learning engineering role. And so that was very enlightening. So I always encourage people if they're getting into a machine learning engineering role, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot that you'll learn on the job. So just start working and, and then you'll learn more about the intricacies of what it's like to deploy machine learning models that you just won't get even in your classes or even in research labs, really. And most research labs. Great advice. Great advice. So Arti, you joined in January and you've been involved in a lot in such a short space of time. Some of some of which is you're actively helping and you're involved in in the the build of the team. Can you give us some insight then into when you're speaking to candidates about a potential career at Snorkel? What is it that you tell them to get them excited about this opportunity above some of the others that they're considering? So one of the things that I, I try to focus on why I decided to join Snorkel and some of the key reasons, and hopefully those resonate. But for me specifically, or just hopefully to other candidates as well, we supervision and programmatic labeling is just one of those things when you hear about, you're like, this is a fundamentally better way to do things and a fundamentally better way to iterate on machine learning applications. So just seeing an impact of the technology. First of all, it's like state of the art, weak supervision. There's a lot of papers still being published. So if you're interested in machine learning research and state of the historical provides that. 
but it also solves like a very clear business problem, which is training data bottleneck that people are paying a lot of money to solve and haven't found a good solution for. And Snorkel really addresses that in a very unique way and is very uniquely positioned. So it's state of the art research applied to a very clear problem. And it's not just me, it's, it's, it's been empirically proven. Our customers are clamoring to get access to Snorkel flow and the platform because they, they see this as a bottleneck and they see the value problem themselves. So we've had very good commercial success based on just the customers that we've taken on and have gotten a lot of interest. And then team, which sounds a bit trite, but it's very important. The team, very motivated, very smart people, but also very fun to work with and very kind, which I didn't realize how important that is. But if you really just enjoy working on your working with your coworkers and you are working on something that you believe is the right way to do things or is a good solution and it's interesting problems, it just makes for a very good and fun working environment. So yes, reiterating again, it's the solves a clear value proposition great coworkers, very good commercial track. We're still very early. We, we were targeting a lot of different verticals. We're still very early and, and we have a lot of growth ahead of us. So even though we are a startup and we've achieved a, a certain level of maturity, there's a lot of work ahead of us in terms of that as well. That's usually what I say to get people to join. Um, and sorry, one last thing I always say is also, we're still in that point where if you have multiple interests like me, I after I left my role at AI Fund, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do in terms of a strict, well-defined role, like just engineering or just product management. And we have the flexibility still to take on multiple different, wear multiple different hats, experience different things and learn more about how to start or grow a early stage startup. So if anybody's interested in you know, starting their own thing in the future or joining an even earlier stage company, it provides a good insight and we're very transparent into other functions and how they're run. So overall, I'm really loving it <laughs> and I hope others can sense my enthusiasm about it as well. It certainly does come true. It shows how passionate you are about the work and how much you believe in what Snorkel is doing. And the success the company has had in the short space of time is also a testament to that. Snorkel is deployed at Google, Intel, Apple, IBM, DARPA, two of the top three banks and many others. And recently received Series B funding. So exciting times ahead. Artie, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, JP. This was really great. AI Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all its members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. Dot com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.